Welcome to the Four Visions Market Podcast, a space built on the principles of integrity and reciprocity. Together, we will engage in thought-provoking conversations about plant medicines, why these plants are coming out of the rainforest, jungles, and mountains after thousands of years, and what it means to be in right relationship with the ancestral wisdom cultures and guardians of these traditions. I'm your host, Mariah Ganessa, founder and director of Four Visions Market. This podcast is the natural evolution in our commitment to providing you, our tribe, with incredible resources to support you on your healing journey through plant medicines. Welcome home. Our guest for today is Daniela Riojas, a curandera, educator, medicine keeper, musician, and artist originally from the border of Texas and Mexico. As a curandera, she communes with Mother Nature and a lexicon of plants, animals, and energies through ancestral practices of channeling and meditation. She has undergone extensive trainings and master plant dietas with indigenous elders who have initiated her into the sacred practice of facilitation and healing in ceremonial space. Daniela has been under the guidance of elders in Nayarit, Mexico, as well as elders and curanderos of the jungles of Peru, who are Cocama, Shepibo, Ashaninka, and Mestizo. For years, Daniela has been traveling extensively throughout North and South America, creating ceremonial healing space for communities in diverse lands and countries. Her healing work consists of sharing traditional and directly received ikaros, or songs, through her diets with master plants. Within this practice is a weaving of Shipibo, Ashaninka, and Nahuatl Icaros. Daniela's voice carries a high vibration of divine love, joy, and nurturing mother energy, which you'll get to hear in this episode, where she shares an Icaro with us at the end, and it's really, really beautiful. Daniela Riojas is the founder of Inticana Medicina, which provides ceremonial healing rooted in indigenous and earth-based practices. The mission at Inticana is to provide gateways of health and well-being through indigenous knowledge, plants, animals, music, frequencies, education, and connecting to all the medicine that this beautiful Mother Earth provides. Inticana Medicina specializes in providing containers of integrity and safety for comprehensive ceremonial healing. This episode is really so special as we are just starting out on this podcast journey together. Daniela is full of wisdom, and this conversation feels so perfect to be one of the first episodes we get to share with you. It's really powerful because Daniela is just coming out of a two-month dieta in the jungles of Peru, and her connection to nature is felt palpably as she shares insights and teachings that she received in her most recent journey and on her path. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy this beautiful conversation. Welcome, Daniela. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I am really looking forward to dropping in with you and having this conversation. So thank you for creating this space and for being open and willing to come onto the show and share with us. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure and a real honor to be here with you. And thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really happy to dive into this conversation with you. Beautiful. Well, let us begin uh, with sharing a little bit about who you are, as well as your mission in this life, and what brought you to the path of the plants. Yeah, so my name is Daniela Riojas, and I am a medicine woman, a curandera, uh, originally from the border of Texas and Mexico, where I grew up in a little town called Eagle Pass. And throughout my life, very early on, I was very much drawn to Mother Nature and this way of connecting to the deeper realms, the deeper aspects of existence. I actually grew up in the Christian church in a very strict Christian home for 18 years of my life. And my father is and was a Christian preacher. So I grew up in uh, an environment of prayer and reverence and this sort of uh, way of connecting to God and singing praise to, to God in that way. It was pretty early on that I think even as a little girl, I wasn't feeling very connected to that way of connecting to God. 
And so I segued into different forms of that connection. So by the time I was about 18, 19, I began to feel into that connection, but through nature and a funnel that that which, which was I was taught in prayer, but into my reverence of trees, of different spirits and entities that I was connecting to within nature, and also funneling that into the creation of songs, the creation of artwork that I did for many, many years as an independent artist. And so that became interwoven into my life, basically a life of ceremony, a life of deep connection to the ancestral realms and to the divine. So through that, my path has deepened very organically and naturally uh, throughout the years of finding myself in ceremony and deeper and deeper it has unraveled into a path of service and a path of learning and being in a, a really deep relationship with indigenous elders, indigenous teachers, that now are my primary guides into um, being in connection to these plant spirits in a way that is helpful. It is deeply helpful for ceremonial healing and for those that are feeling that calling to receive plant medicine and also animal medicine to help facilitate different forms of healing, whether that's physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, and within that practice of curanderismo, it's a lifelong path that I feel that I've committed to and very dedicated to. So within my path as a student learning these ways, I'm also of service and also have a huge passion for connecting people to my elders and my teachers, uh, primarily in Peru and uh, helping to facilitate that place where people can receive the authentic healing from the indigenous elders from the lands of Peru. And yeah, in that way, I feel that it's honoring the lineage and the ancestral lines from where uh, this medicine, you know, these medicines come from. And of course, this is only certain lineages, certain traditions. I'm aware that there's so many other ones that exist, but these are the ones that I've found myself in, in dedication and commitment to. So, And then aside from that, I have uh, whole realms of education as a teacher and also as a guide and an instructor to guide people into these pathways of curanderismo in a way that's safe and allows folks to really tap into the gifts that they may be feeling into and um, give them guidance and some tools, exercises, uh, ways of learning how to harness all of those skills that are needed to practice in these realms in ways of integrity and with safety. Thank you so much for that introduction to who you are and the path that you walk. There are a lot of threads there that I think are really common to many of us in our journey as far as realizing the universality that exists within nature and seeing the ways in which regardless of your upbringing it would ended up being the foundational pillar for your connection to god and all of life and and then through nature you were able to find a, a more resonant connection with yourself and with your connection and so i really love hearing about that journey because i think that's really common for a lot of us who are, gravitate towards the plants and feel called to the plants in in that way. And, you know, really beautiful to hear a little bit more about how you came to be walking this path that you're walking. You know, you are a leader in your community and are doing really beautiful work to provide education as well as be a bridge to those who are looking to deepen in their own healing, deepen in their own spiritual capacity and empowerment. And, you know, as I was preparing for this interview, learning a little bit more about your mentorship program, it was really beautiful. I saw you know, the way in which the program is really geared towards, I think you used the words activating our unique soul signature, which I really loved because, you know, so many of us are needing this orientation, needing this guidance of how to activate our own authentic medicine within us. And so to be holding that space for the authenticity and the 
connection for other people to find their gifts and find their empowerment is such a beautiful thing to be dedicating your life and your your path to. So I really just commend you and honor you for the work that you are doing. And I wanted to ask you to explain and speak to us a little bit about this natural evolution on the personal path when we choose to step into service. Because I think it's it's very much this natural next step that takes place when we go and receive tremendous opening and healing and activation. You know, it's like the next step in that journey to then find our gifts and choose to share them with the world. And so would you please share with us a little bit about your understanding of that natural progression as well as, you know, your insights into how um, we can do that in in a beautiful way, how we can, you know, be not only um, sharing our gifts from authenticity and and truth, but also if we're in that place of being a bridge in some form or another to these ancestral wisdom cultures that have gifted us our healing and have transformed our lives, how we become these bridges and what it means to be a bridge. Yes. Thank you so much for this question. This is something that was actually the a huge inspiration for the birthing of the mentorship, because as I'm facilitating these healing uh, spaces with very powerful plant medicine and animal medicine and seeing people being activated so fully into a new perception of life and a new perception of themselves. The relationship that they have to life naturally begins to evolve very rapidly. And with that can be a huge activation of their gifts their ability to perceive energies differently, their ability to uh, hear into you know information that's going on around them. Everything about their relationship to life has completely shifted. And so with that, I think people tend to want to explore that even more. And also there's a very natural calling to want to be a bridge for other people to experience something that for themselves is feeling very expansive, very much this illumination of every part of existence that's around them, this new connection to life and creation as it is. And so within that inspiration, there's a lot that can happen, which is what I've observed, perhaps maybe moving too rapidly into wanting to be of service before slowing down and grounding all that these medicines are are shifting and evolving within our being. So I have a lot of people coming to me. They're they're activated. There's so many channels that are open within their being. And then they say, I want to learn more. And how can I be of service? And so a big part of how the mentorship even starts is how to fully ground and integrate all of these shifts into the physical body, into the nervous system into the psyche, into our emotional mapping, our psychic mapping, everything before then starting to understand a little bit more of everything that's happening within us. Once we have a good idea of what exactly these medicines are doing to us and all of the, you know, ancestral DNA quantum shifts that we're going through as humans when we're interacting with these spirits Once we understand that within ourselves, we have a much better grounded and safe way of of helping to navigate others through that process as well. But that does take a lot of time and patience and just slowing down and grounding. So that was a, a lot of, you know, just getting a lot of inquiries about that, people coming up and being so excited and inspired. And that inspires me as well. I think being around my teachers and my elders who are constantly slowing me down, Mm -hmm. it helps me to be that for other people. Like Mm -hmm. that, that's the example that I have in my life of them slowing me down constantly as in, you know, as much as I feel I'm, I'm taking my time and I'm, I'm showing up and I'm not asking for much. I'm just here to be of service. And at a, a point where I feel that I'm out of bound within the realm of where I need to be 
to just continue to sit back and listen and to learn, there's always just like a gentle reconfiguration that I receive from my teachers. And I always take that so humbly and with a lot of gratitude because it's within that space that I actually can sit back and tune in much more deeply to the teachings that are coming in from the medicines that I'm communing with, from nature that's around me, through the presence that's needed to really take in and listen in that way. So with that, I then pass that on through my way of being a teacher as well. And it's been a a beautiful way, a beautiful reflection that I myself am taking in for my teachers and then also pass on to others whenever they're wanting to go deeper into this path. And I feel that that's very helpful, that that presence, that listening, that slowing down, that grounding, that regulation of the nervous system, paying attention to all aspects of our being, that in itself is a very beautiful opening for a person's authentic truth to really come in very strongly, where people are tuned into themselves more deeply. So yes, we have teachers. Yes, we have elders or people around us, or even the medicines themselves, nature, everybody that's teaching us. But when we have a settledness within ourselves to be able to listen in in a particular way, to to learn how to learn, basically, that's when our interfacing with everything starts to shift and a very deep truth starts to come through. So that's a lot of what I believe in for myself as I'm on my path. I'm very grateful for my teachers who pass on lineage, tradition, teachings that have been around for a long time. And that's like straight teaching, like this is the way it is. And I have a lot of respect for that. You know, this is the way you use this tool. And this is the way that energy works. There's sort of factual, hard things like information that needs to be taken in. But within that is also then how do we use this information in a way that's authentic and that can be used in a a fuller expression of our unique frequency, our unique signature that, that wants to come through as its own form of medicine. But all of that takes a lot of time and a lot of listening, a lot of training, a lot of skills, a lot of learning. And I feel that That is also very essential for energetic cleanliness when we're traversing these worlds of of just very, very deep energetic spaces that we're that we're in whenever we're working with these plant spirits, animal medicines, things of that nature. The more that we're in tune with ourselves and that we have that ability to read what's going on around us while also being in tune with ourselves and learning how to be the force that grounds all of it, that's where we can we'll very skillfully work as a healer, as a curandera or a curandero, but also maintain a cleanliness with those spaces that we're facilitating in. So authenticity is not just for the expression's sake, you know, to keep the integrity of ourselves intact while we're moving through these spaces, but also energetically and for the way that we're working uh, and being of service in, in these healing spaces. Wow, so eloquently put. And there's so many threads in that response that just resonated on such a deep level. So thank you for sharing all of that because you know, many of us are looking for orientation on this path. And I think you just touched on many different elements that are fundamental in creating this foundation to walk a long path. You know, this path is forever. And so to really walk it in a sustainable way, you know, and treading softly uh, on the earth and uh, utilizing all of these different tools, all of these different elements with awareness to create uh, this this fortitude and this spiritual strength to be able to sustain the path and to continue forward, you know? So thank you for, for that eloquent response. And there's a lot of different directions we could take the conversation from everything that you just shared. But one thing that, you know, is really coming to my heart 
is to ask you to speak a little bit more about this concept of spiritual cleanliness, as well as how to walk with a level of balance, uh, harmony, and spiritual protection and what that means and when we need to call upon that. Yeah, there's a lot here. So, you know, I, I kind of want to segue a little bit into the diet that I'm in right now because I'm mm-hmm. learning s- even deeper level levels to that currently. Mm-hmm. So, yes, when it comes to spiritual cleanliness and protection, there's so much insight and seeing that, again, even going back to what I was going into before requires so much deep listening a very keen understanding of what's going on in our field. Maybe not in such a way that we're overly active and out of our bodies, but more so in our bodies and tuning in to what exactly is going on within us and also within the field of our existence. I'm speaking about this in in the position of being a medicine holder, because I feel like that responsibility uh, immediately delineates oneself into having different kinds of responsibilities and the need to protect medicines in different capacities. And so much of this revolves a lot around our word, our intentions, the way that we're that we've assembled our altar the way that we create even practices around people coming to the altar and wanting to receive medicine. What does that look like? What are the steps that people need to take in order to even make the decision to sit with medicine and all of the, the processing of that, you know, getting to the point where you know that people's intentions are clear whenever they come and they want to partake in these very deep processes. And also There's so much to be said around our society as it is, our culture, that so much is happening online, within social media. And that's something that I I navigate a lot because unexpectedly, really, I've received so much more attention online and especially on Instagram because I, I love expressing prayer and song with the earth and also sharing that with people as a way to connect and bridge people into different ways of connecting with the earth and praying with her through ways of of music or ways of our intentionality of opening up our heart in these ways. And with that is a lot of attention and a lot of energy coming from many different people, from many different cultures, from many different backgrounds. And so with that, for me, my practice of spiritual cleanliness and protection has gone into deeper layers and deeper layers to where even this diet that I'm coming out of, uh, very strong. I did a diet with mapacho first uh, recently and then went into a a really deep, uh, strong diet with a palo fuerte called arrosquito in isolation in the jungle for a month with my maestra and also worked with many other plants, uh, many other uh, trees as well and animal spirits there. And so as I'm learning and going deeper into this sensitivity, this really deep knowing of everything that's happening with me and also in my field, and also with the responsibility of being a medicine carrier and the the way to protect the medicine, there's so many different teachings that continuously come in that the plants are teaching me. And all of that is straightening energies in my field. Straighten, 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 straighten. Boundaries, 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 boundaries. Integrity, integrity, integrity. Intention, you know, just going through the line over and over. And just making sure that the ways that people are perceiving medicine, that that is straightened out. The way that people are coming to the altar, that that is straightened out. That the the way that even offerings are presented and spoken about, that that is straightened out. And with that, I think is uh, there's a lot of learning and teaching and education, uh, especially in our culture nowadays, to share on this. Because 
within the publicity and within the ways that there's so many eyes on medicine nowadays, we have to take into consideration the fact that all of that is energy. There's infinite amount of perceptions that are all being put into altars, into portals, ceremonial spaces that need to be protected in order for people to go through their processes very safely. So for me, I've been going into deeper layers of privacy and of really refining the way that people are intaken into wanting to sit with medicine. So I I work with my operations manager every single day, and most of our work centers around the systems and the pathways that people take to get to a ceremonial space. And all of that is requires a tremendous amount of intaking, safety, checking, communication with people, giving them the proper guidelines, the proper education about what exactly this is, what exactly this, this is opening up for them. If they have the resources for integration afterwards, are they aware of what their body is going to go through? Do they have support for the, ch- the changes and the shifts that they're going to go through afterwards? All of these things that go into people undergoing these very enormous transformations and feeling the gravity and the weight of that naturally keeps me very humble and in a place of how do we keep these spaces safe? How do we keep them of integrity? How do we continue to tune into the actual medicines and feel and and hear their guidance as to how to keep them safe. I feel like they themselves have a lot to say about that. And so uh, for me as a medicine keeper, my continuous practice is to be in meditation and to always tune in and to feel into where something is off in my field. Am I feeling in my heart and in my body that this is good, (laughs) that this is a way that I can create spaces that are of integrity and that are safe. And if it's not fully there, then that that takes reevaluation and time and care in order to redo or reconfigure whatever needs to be reconfigured to make sure that that safety and that um, integrity is intact through and through. I love the way you put that because as you were saying this this concept of straightening out, I, I imagined like a wrinkly tapestry, you know, we're ironing out the wrinkles because the medicines are pure. They're of the purest vibration of nature and of the earth. And in their natural element, they they maintain that profound connection and high vibration, but they travel very far and physically and energetically to get to us to to work with them. And so in that process, uh, whether it be the transference of hands or the physical journey that it takes, a lot can happen. And so I love, you know, all of these different elements that you're bringing to the conversation because it really, you know, puts in perspective this concept of protection of these tools and protection of these these sacred allies and working with them in, in a good way, as well as just the responsibility to work with them. You know, you're speaking as a medicine carrier and someone who holds sacred ceremony and has this great responsibility. But the truth is, any of us who welcome any of these tools into our life have some level of responsibility to work with them and to carry them and protect them in a good way. And so when someone sees us working with one of these tools, we are potentially, you know, representing the medicine as well as sharing the medicine on some level in some capacity. And so to be from this place of of true humility and reverence to the immense power that these these tools contain, as well as, you know, humbled by the responsibility that it takes to work with these allies is such a great place to come from. You know, it's really just a wonderful approach and really sets us up for 
success on this path and, and uh, you know, wellness and balance. Because as you said, if we, if we start to slip up or perhaps get sloppy with our use of these sacred tools, uh, that not only affects us, but it also affects the interconnected web of life and all peoples who are working with these tools, working with these medicines. So, it's so beautiful to bring that into, into the conversation to reflect on and to integrate and have in our awareness. And especially because nowadays you can source these tools anywhere. You know, you can go on eBay and buy yourself some tiger teeth or some eagle feathers, you know, and you can get a lot of these ceremonial sacred, sacred, sacred tools just by Googling and searching on the web. And so part of our initiative and part of our project is based around this concept of ethical sourcing and really sharing these medicines in a good way with righteousness, you know, because the reality is that people are going to get them either way. So knowing that being a vehicle and holding that that space for ethical and conscious sourcing and sharing of these tools is is really important and we've been inspired to do our work based off of that principle you know and so that being said I would love to talk to you a little bit about these tools um, and how to work with them in a good way how to deepen our relationships with these plant spirits and animal spirits mm, that you can, you know, feel free to, to talk about specific tools. Um, if you feel called to, to share some beautiful wisdom about specific plants or allies, I know you do go into that in your mentorship, which is beautiful. And I was really excited when I saw that as part of the curriculum. So I think our listeners would love to hear what you have to, to share with us on that topic. Yeah, I would actually love to share about the Gushma because that one, that the Gushma itself has been such a strong teacher for me. And also the Gashimbo, those are two tools that I recently was initiated into carrying. So the Gushma is a ceremonial garb that many different tribes of the jungle have used uh, throughout time in, in a, actually different capacities. So the Gushma sort of, it looks like a long dress kind of style, but it's, it's overly sized and in different tribes have different forms of Gushma. So different patterns or different designs of them. And previously what I've learned is that they were used a little bit more casually, more as in they were more of like a common dress for uh, folks who were living in the jungle, different tribes that are from the Amazon or the Uka Ukayali Basin. But throughout time, obviously, their garb has changed significantly. And now the Kushma is more so associated with those who are holding that indigenous tradition or that lineage. And most folks who are using that are, are working with medicine. So the Gushma now is associated with uh, an indigenous person or somebody who has been initiated from an indigenous person from a certain tribe and works with the medicine. And so it, it in itself is a form of medicine and a huge form of protection when working with uh, specifically with ayahuasca in, in ceremonial space. And a rite of initiation, right? Yes. Yes. And you can find them at the stores, you know, in, in different markets around Peru and I'm sure in other places, but if my way of approaching it, and, and, and this comes down to personal integrity and how each and every person, every single person on this planet has a choice of how they want to walk, what kind of path they want to walk, what kind of relationship that they want to have with their spiritual life or with these spiritual tools or what initiation means for them, you know, and, and what kind of relationships they want to build with teachers around them, with the medicines, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, my relationship with the Kushma for so long was this, oh my gosh, you know, it, I've been in so many ceremonies with my teachers and with my elders, receiving medicine from them, receiving guidance from them, and, you know, having my own way of being in ceremony that was in reverence to the, this medicine of ayahuasca. And um, 
you know, receiving items from them along the way, like, oh, hey, use this or use this and and teaching me how to use all the, all of the tools until they start gathering, you know. And the gushma for me was, you know, it's just, it's on that tier of, of it requiring a certain level of years, you know, of dedication, of showing up, of being of service, and also to get to that, that level of being a maestro or a maestra that has done a certain kind of diets, you know, strong diets, extensive diets, and has been not just uh, learning from a teacher, but learning from the plants themselves and spending extended periods of time in the jungle, which is really necessary. That that study is very, very necessary to hold the medicine of, of ayahuasca it, from the path that I walk. And so I've had the kushma come in and it's just, for me, been this placeholder of you know, it would be beautiful to find myself in that place at some point, being able to have a gushma, you know, but that to me is, that's a huge responsibility and I'm still in my learning process. So stay grounded, stay present, stay learning, stay of service and one foot in front of the other. So it's come in my thoughts. And then I say, oh, you know, that what a beautiful place that would, that would be when I find myself in that part of my path. And it was, I done um, a retreat last year in Mexico with my teachers. So I brought them out to Mexico to facilitate a a medicine retreat. And uh, I'm sure that's full circle for you to bring your teachers to your homeland, your native roots. Oh my goodness. I can only imagine. How how (laughs) perfect. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, there, uh, my maestra I met, it was her first time. It was her second time ever leaving Peru. The first time was when I brought her to Costa Rica. So that was a huge journey, a huge, you know, just to get her out of Peru was a huge process. Uh, it took about eight months to arrange that because energetically, even that's such a delicate process. And so that took a long time. We got her to Costa Rica she was just like, what is this? You know, I, she couldn't believe it. And she was also just so grateful. And then to bring it to Mexico and also with my other teacher, uh, Mauro, brought them both out. And yes, definitely a full circle to to have my roots as a Mexican, having my indigenous lineage connected to Mexico. And then also my teachers was a great merging mm. of my paths, you know, and, and and honoring all of it and not pretending that I'm Peruvian, but mostly, you know, that I'm a bridge. I'm, I'm, I'm composed of all of this teaching. And so it was during the final uh, ceremony and, you know, we finished, it was beautiful. There was rains coming in and cleansing. It was just, it was a magnificent ceremony and everybody had already gone to the kitchen and I was sitting there by myself and my teacher, Aime, came up to me and she said, Danielita, you need your kushma and you need your kashimbo. It's time. And, I, and she said, you know, when you come to Peru next time, I'm going to show you how it is to have a kushma. I'm going to teach you all the ways of this, this protection that you are needing because you're here at the altar with us. And also the kashimbo. And she briefly took me through a little bit of what that would look like. And she walked away. And, you know, it was in that I just sat there for some time and recapping the years that I've been in this place of service and not asking, but mostly just showing up and how that that place of just being patient and having presence with what is in the moment. Yeah, it just brought me to tears and I was really grateful for that invitation for her. So we arranged all of it throughout the year, which then culminated into the diet that I just completed where she taught me all the ways of the kushma and and the ways of the kashimbo. And it was a very intensive process of curing the kushma with medicine and also curing the gashimbo with medicine. So it's not just the tool itself, but all the medicine that's inputted into the tools. Uh, so the, the gushma contains 
very strong trees, contains the aquosquito, which I dieted with, and also the lupuna, which is what she dieted with, dieted, two palos fuertes, and then the cachimbo contains chirik sanango and also toe. So with it's just not just the tools, but they're carrying the the spirit and the energy of the plants and the trees that are connected to them as well. And when they're cured and activated within a diet, all of the field and the energy of the diet is inputted into those tools. So not only do they contain all of that, so when they're used in ceremony, they're felt, they're deeply felt. It's not just, oh, I'm just smoking my kashimbo. It's the kashimbo, all the plants and the diet and the energy that's in it the mapacho and the tobacco that's in it, the breath that's used to activate it, the ikaro that's used to activate it. And then so once that kashimbo is used in a blessing for somebody, they're being inputted with all of that medicine and it goes deep into their body and deep into their spiritual, you know, all their their spiritual body to completely cleanse them, align them and imbue them with that strength and the spirit and the plants of the jungle from specifically from Peru. But with that is a huge activation for people as well so that they can understand the significance of these plant spirits, the significance of tobacco, and help them through their process wherever it is that they are within uh, their process of sitting with medicine. So there's so much significance with all of the layers of it. You know, the fact that it's all of the medicine and all of the years being, you know, walking the path to even be invited to hold the tool. And then it's the process of going and harvesting the plants, making the bath, curing it for for weeks going through the activation process, putting all the energy of the diet into it. And then arriving to that place where then it can be used of service for somebody within their process in that ceremonial space. And so it just creates a different kind of feeling of energy and reverence and respect that should be paid to what these processes are and what these initiations really mean. Full body chills hearing the full circle process that it was for you to receive the kusma as well as you know all of the wisdom that came with it that you are now transmuting to us in this conversation so so many blessings and respect and it you know brought up for me memories of receiving different tools from my teacher i'm a student of the yahe and i study with a taita from the ingano tribe in colombia and so we too have our tools that are given when the student is ready you know and there's something so beautiful about cultivating that patience and really preparing yourself and you know, the difference between going out and getting one of these tools and having a teacher who is a wisdom carrier and a lineage holder recognize your readiness, your spiritual readiness, and entrust them to you and initiate you um, with these tools is profound, you know. And so we we often encourage our community to go out and seek a teacher, go out and seek the guides to orient you, go visit the depths of the jungle, you know, because there's so much potency that can't even be articulated in words that comes from going to the source and immersing yourself in these wisdom cultures. And like you said, it's not just the prayers and the elements that go into each of these tools, but it's the spiritual Uh, backing of the entire lineage that gets infused into you through your devotion and and the time that we put into learning in a good way. And so the power just amplifies and becomes even more potent and um, profound. And so thank you for sharing that that story and you know intimate experience of of your own initiations because I think it also there's so much to be received from it, you know, even if we're not in a deep study with a particular lineage or particular teacher, I think just anyone hearing that will feel the potency and the desire to seek that out, which is beautiful, you know, and something that we really do encourage. So it's wonderful to hear. And, you know, I 
wanted to ask you because we source tobacco. We we share hape. Uh, we work with about 10 different tribes throughout the Brazilian Amazon, the hape tribes. And this is the primary form of tobacco that we share on our marketplace. And with that, you know, comes so many different levels of intricacy as far as responsibility goes and education and, um, you know, how to work with this master plant in a good way that has been so profoundly manipulated by Western society and warped, um, as well as, you know, used for evil when the power of the plant has so much potential for healing, but when taken out of the ceremonial context can cause harm. So I would love to hear, you know, you just came out of um, a tobacco dieta along with the other master plants, but first you did the tobacco and with my pacho. And I would love to hear any insights or teachings that came from your recent journey with the mapacho as far as the spirit of the grandfather tobacco and anything else that you feel called to share with us, um, those of us who work with hape um, or other forms of tobacco, you know, I think it's becoming more and more popular, more and more common and I think part of the reason why truly is because the grounding force and the divine sacred balancing force that the tobacco brings is so deeply needed for us in our, in our culture and in our society. It brings this balm that we're so deeply needing for our balance and our healing journey. And so it really um, calls to many people. And so Please share with us a little bit, um, whatever comes to your heart, on how to deepen our relationship with this master plant, how to work with it, any other, you know, teachings or insights that come to come to mind to share with us today. So before I dieted with Mapacho, and it, it actually came so naturally, but kind of soon before I was going to do this diet, I, I already knew I was going to do the diet because I was taking a group. But earlier in the year, I had, I've always had a really close relationship with tobacco. And earlier during the year, I was in Palenque in Mexico and and stumbled into uh, a hand poked tattoo artist who does ceremonial tattoos with uh, two really good girlfriends of mine. And as I was looking through the book, I'm really particular about tattoos, so I don't really get any or many at all. And as I went through the book, you know, I saw this beautiful tobacco flower that he had hand poked for somebody else. And I said, tobacco, I Mm. would tattoo tobacco on me, Uh Um, mainly. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, beautifully, the it was actually a tobacco flower that was in a progress of blooming. And uh, so it wasn't even the leaf. It was a tobacco flower, which is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it was wrapped around a jaguar that was sort of like dancing. So it was the dancing jaguar and the tobacco flower was, was in bloom and the jaguar was dancing with it. So it was really beautiful. And I, I didn't end up getting the jaguar, just the tobacco flower. And we had just opened up the portal for the group diet. So Whenever we open up an offering, it's this it's a portal that's opening. I'm I'm really tuned into the fact that each person, each soul that's meant to come through into these ceremonies are you know, their lives are about to change drastically. And I feel all of that. So we had just opened up this offering for the group diet and I received the hand poke tattoo of the tobacco flower and went to sleep and in the dream, because in diets the plants primarily transmit their teachings through dreams. In my dream, I saw this sort of chaos of, of energy. I was in a, cer- it was like multiple ceremonies going on at once. And there seemed to be a lot of chaotic energy going around. And I felt the presence of the tobacco spirit as this solid channel of grounded, straight energy, like an arrow that was the only thing that was immovable within everything that seemed like it was unstable. So it was the stability and the focus and the center within everything else that needed to be corrected or that was, you know, unstable. And within that, I felt, you know, a deeper teaching of the grandfather spirit of tobacco, of mapacho, which is that which keeps us centered, grounded, and rooted 
and sort of in this solid way, able to see what may be out of balance or out of alignment and not go into that misalignment, but to stay in our alignment and to observe it. And then from that place, straighten it out, move through it as this force that that can be the steadiness within what is moving around it. So I had that vision. And then it wasn't until a bit before the diet that it just came through. And literally, I was messaging with Mauro and I said, you know, I'm really called to tobacco and and really called to a diet. And he said, yes, absolutely. You know, we'll do that. So when I went into the diet with Mapacho, it was the, one of the first visions that I received was of the Yanapuma, the Jaguar, which is perfect. You know, the tobacco was with the Jaguar in that initial vision that I had seen of it months prior. And again, just this very strong aligning force and also, you know, with the diets, there's so much that the plants, they have to teach by showing what's, what's unaligned, what needs to fall away. So my teaching with that diet was a lot of mental, I guess, anywhere within the foundation of my being mentally, emotionally, and physically that was preventing from the utmost integrity of my foundation. So anywhere where there was holes or loose ends or things that were a little bit unstable, the the plant went there and was like, what is this? What is this? What is that? And it was this shaking up of all of it. And it was very uncomfortable. I was in just a, a, a lot of loops of uncomfortability, but within that was a very strong pointing that I felt the spirit of tobacco was was not allowing me to avoid. You know, Mm -hmm. like, let's look at this. Nope, let's look at it again. Let's look at it again. Let's look at it again. To the point where I was like, okay, you know, I have to be present with this. Let me journal. Let me sit with this. Let me process. Let me breathe through this. Let me get to the root of what is going on here within where I'm, I'm feeling misalignments. And there is a lot of great teaching within that because tobacco is used to open up ceremony where I was finding the teachings of instability, I was also then, the the plant was also teaching me of, okay, when opening up ceremony, this is how we open up ceremony in the most solid way with the tobacco, because the tobacco connects one person, a person to all the other spirits of the jungle. So as we ready ourselves to open up the ceremony of ayahuasca, we connect to all the plants that we've worked with, all the diets that we've done, all the spirits that are in protection, that are doing the cleansing and the the curing and, and the healing within the space. So we call them in with the Icaros, but we have to be authentically connected to all those plants. So the tobacco is the bridge of that connection. So I was in that diet really receiving how to fully connect to everything through the portal of the tobacco so that what, as we're there as a curanderos, there's, we're unshakable. We're very mm-hmm. solid in that connection to those plant spirits that are then helping everybody and guiding everybody through their, their journeys. And I received Icaros also as well that were to sing for the tobacco in activating it. And so my connection to tobacco has been a a lot of the connection to the breath, to the air element, and how we sopla the tobacco first, put in our intention, put in our, our prayer of what we are calling the tobacco in to anchor in to our beings. What is our prayer here? We breathe that into the tobacco first. And then once we light it, whether it's in the cachimbo or in the cigarette mapacho, then with the breath and the medicine of the tobacco, then we send that prayer into wherever it is, into a space. We do a sopla on somebody or we start blessing our instruments, our tools, whatever way that we're using the tobacco. So, you know, I see I see tobacco as sort of this straight arrow of just cutting through misalignments or imbalances and finding the balance within everything and creating a, a really strong uh, sense of clarity uh, for ourselves and through whatever may be coming up for us in, in whatever moment. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for those insights that you can really feel come from the heart and direct experience from your recent initiations in the jungle. So thank you for sharing with us. You're very welcome. So as we near the end of this interview, I would love for you to share a little bit more about where people can find you, as well as your upcom- upcoming Intikana member, uh, mentorship program, and um, how people can learn more about that for those who may feel the call to study with you after this conversation. Yeah, so my website is www.intikana.com. Uh, on Instagram, it's my first and last name, Daniela Riojas. I also have music on Spotify, which is mm-hmm. my first and last name. And my website has information on everything, including the mentorship, uh, as well as a lot of different offerings that we have coming up for the year. And the mentorship is going to open for registration on February 1st Mm -hmm. until March 4th. So we're going to keep registration open for a little bit over a month and give folks an opportunity to sign up. It's a three-month mentorship so it's it's really like a three-month ceremony it's it's a very deep dive into oneself a lot of self-reflection and then going into tools and specifics about the use of plant and tree allies uh, different kinds of tools with sound with music um, opening up ceremony space getting deeper into energetics understanding all of that So yes, people are going through deep internal processes while then understanding how to arrive into using these tools in a way that is more skillful. And then we have a graduation call. People then start to share their gifts and their medicine with within the community. And hopefully what this program is about is really about creating more leaders, more uh, folks who have these skills embedded into their being who can then go into their communities and and help serve, you know, help the progression of humanity in, in the ways that each each person is being called to do that. So we have people from all different backgrounds come through the mentorship, whether they're therapists or psychotherapists, working in nursing, maybe wanting to go into different pathways of healing. Uh, we have musicians, sound healers, we have yoga instructors. It's it's not really geared towards any kind of, you know, facet of healing. It's a, a portal for anybody who wants to learn more tools and go deeper into themselves and take in more teachings from indigenous curanderismo and apply that to whatever practice is mm-hmm. authentic to them. So it's a beautiful program and we have students from all over the world now. So it's a growing community. It's a great way to to be connected to a lot of like-minded people as well. Mm -hmm. It sounds amazing. And uh, when this episode airs, the registration will be open. So those listening, go and check it out. We'll put the info that she just shared for her website and music uh, on in the show notes. So make sure to go learn a little bit more. But honestly, you can just feel the medicine that Daniela has to share. And really, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to deepen within a really beautiful and authentic container. So Thank you for sharing, Daniela, with all of us. And well, first, I, I want to just pause and see if you're maybe open to sharing either an ikaro or a prayer with us to close this episode. I know everyone would really love to get to hear your direct channel in that way to close this conversation. Sure. I'd love to share a song. Ikaro. <clears throat> Shimi shimi pampanu, ma sha shi o airi. Shimi shimi pampanu, ma sha shi o airi. Ya ko si sa flori taini. Rosa y si 
Ya cosisa florita y ni rosa y sira y ni. Motelillo bujeo, ampi ampiriri. Motelillo bujeo. Ampi ampiriri, inchamo si sochi, o te akiriri, inchamo si sochi, o te akiriri, shayare mairo. Sinchi, sinchi, so chill. Shayare mairuna. Shamuri, riri. Pampani meets la sot lairi. Pampani meets la sot la. Pampani meets la sot lairi. Pampani meets la sot la. Ya cosi sa florita y ni rosa y si iraidi. Ya cosi sa florita y ni rosa y si iraidi. Thank you so much, sister. So beautiful, so powerful. You're so welcome. Muchas gracias. Mm. What What is that Ikaro for? This Ikaro came to me after working with perfume that my maestra showed me. So we worked with every plant that's within the perfume. And it's her very secret and special recipe that she's created. So she passed that recipe to me and showed me each of the ingredients in it. And then we also came across another flower that's called Yakusisa. Uh, during the diet and ended up putting that into the perfume as well and I was in my cabin during the diet and I started hearing spirits of these flowers and different plants that are in the perfume in the Ikaro and it was just it came through very very clearly and this Ikaro has four different languages in it it has uh, Quechua, Spanish, uh, Nahuatl and also Ashaninka and yeah, it just came very naturally. So it has all of the medicines of the perfumes in the Ikaro, as well as Yako Sisa and Rosa Sisa, which are two beautiful flowers that are used to illuminate the spirit, bring love and sweetness into the heart. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your prayer, your channel, your heart with us. Is there any final words or message that you have to share with us today? I think, you know, I want to bring people back to the simplicity and the power of prayer. Sometimes, you know, we have, yes, we have all the tools. Yes, we have all the plants. We have all of these resources and abundance that our beautiful earth provides and that creator provides for us. And also just our intention, our, our prayer, the words that we bring into our body, into our life, that in itself carries so much. And I, I like to invite people back into that simplicity within themselves of bringing prayer into one's life and sitting at the altar, sitting with the earth, and just simply being in the vibration of prayer and calling in the good things uh, that you deserve in your life that just with simple prayer and that connection to creator that that in itself is a beautiful portal and it, it's it's a miracle how beautifully 
our prayers are carried each and every day. So yeah, bringing it back to a simple prayer sometimes is is the best. Mm. (laughs) Thank you for that perfect reminder. And thank you for who you are, all that you are and all that you share and beautiful mission that you are carrying in this lifetime. And Many blessings to you and to your family, to your work, to your teachers and their lineages. And may, may only love accompany you on your path. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I appreciate the space to share my words. And I hope that this conversation is significant and helpful for folks out there in the world. Muchas gracias. Mm. From everyone at the Four Visions Market family, we would like to thank you for listening to our podcast. We really hope that you've enjoyed the conversation and gained many new insights on plant medicines, ancestral wisdom, and much more. Please remember to visit our website at www.fourvisionsmarket.com for more resources and information on plant medicine and spiritual tools. And please don't forget to follow us across social media for regular updates on upcoming episodes. We are grateful for your support and look forward to continuing this path with you all. Until next time, take care, stay present and stay connected.